<laughs> All right, so this is based on Nocodamian. Well, you're going to find out who Nocodamian is. And uh, as the time goes on, you'll find out more. And hold your questions, please. Okay. Oh, and I guess I have to get this changing of the slides here. Let's go on. Here we go. This is the book that most of this information is based on. This is a book that uh, Bernadette Brand, who is one of the core group members, very close to Billy, wrote. And she gathered this information from Billy, from various contact notes, etc. So that is the translation of the title of the book. Can everybody see that okay? All right, good. And that is the back. This book cannot fully illuminate the person of Nocodamian, and he remains what he was over the millions of years for the descendants of his peoples, a figure who occupies an absolutely individual status in the history of the universe, an enduring monument, therefore, which the human being can attain if he or she opens himself, herself, for the consciousness of the truth in their inner self and begins to implement and live this consciousness. So that's pretty amazing. And other, the other part of the, um, this presentation is based on new information that came from Christian Frainer, which was a booklet he compiled arising out of many questions that came out of, from people reading this book and seeing things that didn't necessarily uh, always line up. So lots of questions were raised, and this booklet was done, and I spent the last year translating it and have now incorporated it into this new um, version of this Nocodamian presentation. So, we're going to take it back a little bit. This is talking about the Big Bang. And as you can see, it happened about 40 trillion years ago. The next few slides will be just a brief overview of, with some new information as to the unfolding of our material universe in order to contextualize Nocodamian's evolutionary lineage. And so we start at the beginning. And the Big Bang was the birth of our new creational universe, universal consciousness, which is what creation can be termed as. And it's the lowest form of a creation. There's many creations, which this, this presentation isn't going to, into all about creations, but we are the lowest form. And it, our creation came out of a, uh, uh, an area called the absolute absolutum, suffice to say. And... We have a twin creation, and both creations will continue to expand, and the material belts will continue to make new galaxies and solar systems until they reach an age of approximately 155.5 trillion years, and then we'll contract. We'll contract for the same 155.5 trillion of years. Each creation consists of seven distinct belts. The fourth belt is the material belt. That's where we are. And the material belt itself consists of seven different space-time dimensions, each with its own array of uh, physical planets, stars, galaxies, nebulas, and dark matter. Our universe is one of these space-time dimensions of the fourth belt of our creation, and we, we call our dimension the Dern universe. We know that another dimension is called the Ankar uh, in our universe, in our um, creation, material belt. Christian Frainer wrote on, in an email August 5th, 2019, saying that our Dern universe is very scarcely populated by human beings, contrary to the Ankar dimension in which the Pleiaran live. And, for, um, and it's the same place where the ancestors of the Chinese and Japanese peoples originated. The ancestors of the Chinese and Japanese and other extraterrestrials changed from their dimension to this one through a dimensional portal. And actually, the Pleiaran found this dimensional portal um, when they were actually chasing what was to later be our moon when it went from the Ankar, it suddenly disappeared, and they were researching where did this go. It somehow, that what was to later be our moon, went through that dimensional portal, and that's how they found it, and that's what them brought them to the Earth for the first time about 22 million years ago. And our Earth was really not inhabitable at that time. So there's a whole long history about that, which we're not going into right now anyway. 
So, what we have recently found out through a further explanation by Billy is that life in our material universe goes through 49 billion year cycles of being and not being, which seamlessly transition into and out of material existence in the fourth material belt. As explained by Christian in an email communication with him about this, the information about the renewal of the universe every 49 billion years has the effect that life forms develop and evolve into the pure spirit levels, which are human beings, or are dissolving into neutral energy, which is animals and plants, etc. But the developing and the dissolving process of the celestial objects, like the suns and the galaxies and the planets, that lasts longer. And it needs several of these 49 billion year cycles for that to occur. But during this long pro process, there's a constant replacement process occurring, which can be compared to a rose plant disappearing in winter and coming to thrive again in the spring, or the human being who replaces their own cells every seven years or so throughout their life. During the gradual and seamless transitioning, physical life of the universe ceases to exist, and in between that, after that time, there's about four, three billion years of rest or dormancy between the physical existences and the new life forms of all genera, genera and species and subsequently humans flourish again. So one may ask, where are we at now? How far along are we? And it turns out that we are about 17 billion years into our current 46 billion year of life existence. So, only 29 billion to go, folks. Got some time. So, star systems, planets have come and gone already, and I would hazard to guess probably galaxies as well. However, given that various nebulas, star systems, galaxies have durations that extend across many of these 49 year cycles, there are systems out there that existed before our current 7 billion, 17 billion years, of course. For example, our own Milky Way galaxy is 810 billion years. I don't know how many 49 year cycles that is, 49 billion, but uh, ours is 8, 10 billion. And our Earth started forming about 646 billion years ago. So that's just the gases starting to coalesce and blah, blah, blah. But organic life did not occur on Earth until about 5 billion years ago. So let's get into Nicodemia. On page 45 in her book, Bernadette Brandt states that about 10 billion years ago, in the universe of the creation universe consciousness, humans first appeared on various planets who, as such, already disposed of a conscious consciousness evolution, which are beings that are, have developed to a certain point where creational spirit forms can now enter and can incarnate for the first time and begin their evolutional cycle through many millions of um, incarnations, reincarnations. Um. And about 380 million years before these first humans, um, Nogadamian spirit form incarnated, or I should say after, after these first human beings started to incarnate 10 billion years ago, Nogadamian spirit form came into existence and incarnated for the first time and it began its long journey. Nogadamian story begins, as I said, 9.62 billion years before Emmanuel on a distant galaxy that existed in one of the other six space-time continuums belonging to our material belt. Probably Arcan, but we don't know. That galaxy uh, was called uh, the Lyran system and was 3.8 billion light years away from ours, where our home is here in the Milky Way galaxy. And though it was in a different dimension, there seems to be a way that they have to do these measurable distances that can be attributed between point A and point B. That, I'm not sure how that works, but that's what it is. So um, in the Lyran galaxy was a star called Varon or Waron, which had a planet called Sadir. This was the first planet where human life developed those 10 billion years ago, and is the very same one where Nokodamian spirit form incarnated for the first time that 9.62 billion years ago. Thus, in the almost 400 million years before Nakadamian, that's how the other human beings were already living. To his life. 
I don't know why I picked this slide, but it's just how I'm imagining and it was, but maybe it was more uh, technological by that time. Anyway, he lived to be uh, 1,763 years in that first lifetime. His name had a meaning. It meant immaculate, valuable one. And he began to work on and to develop the spiritual teaching. The teaching had developed since the beginning of his own learning and self-teaching after he had come to the acknowledgement of the creation of natural laws and recommendations and their principles of operation. The unfolding of his lineage was to encompass four different time spans over the following 9.62 billions of years. And that will be covered a bit later in this presentation. After countless reincarnations of the first Nocodamian spirit form, it was once again enlivened with a human being also named Nocodamian. This Nocodamian's lifespan was 2,500 years. This is when he set down the foundations of the prophetic teachings and as the first herald began the work of the spreading of the teaching of the truth, teaching of the spirit, and teaching of the life, as well as the recognition and implementing of the creational natural laws and recommendations to peoples wherever he went. And so, he was an esteemed teacher, and now over millions of years, the personalities bearing the Nakodamian spirit lineage brought together many people who were from the far distant descendants of the Ur peoples, from going back to the times of his first Nakodamian and many lives in between. And these Ur peoples, and many, as well as many new personalities, gathered around him from their own, out of their own free will, and to whom he openly declared who he was, and who he then taught, and who would work with him in the mission to spread the spiritual teaching. Just before the last half of his um, last life, I guess, as an Academian, 2,500 year, of his 2,500 years, um, he started creating his own people, and this creation of his, new, of his own people was done through normal biological reproduction, through spiritual teaching and leadership, as well as through cloning. Uh, there are many misrepresentations circulating that he created the spirit forms, but that's not possible. Only creation does this. Most of those termed as the new spirit forms or newly created human beings meant those who he taught and who had, become, who, who had overcome their old barbaric modes of thinking and general unknowledgeableness. So this intensive teaching was successful for those who were more developed, as you can see, and less successful for those who didn't have the benefit of experience. So the goal of this intensive teaching and his ultimate hope was to expedite his people's spirit forms in their evolution and shorten the required time in their spirit forms reincarnational cycles. This so-called crash course in the spiritual teaching resulted in a very quick and increased theoretical knowledge. However, what was missing for the relatively new spirit forms was the accompanying experience with it that goes with it and through which one develops essences of wisdom from one's own experience. So, and without the wisdom, a further evolvement was subject to hindrance for these people. They lacked the consciousness evolution that comes out of the years of particular instinctual, intuitional, and knowledge-based experience, which a natural evolutive building upon past learning provides. This spawned uncertain and uneasy future possibilities for them and their descendants, and thus there were many who couldn't be turned around and who fell back into depravity and barbarism. So altogether, it took Nocodemian spirit form a total of 52 million years of evolution in physical lives before it was a it, I should, it, the spirit form was able to pass over into the next level of evolution, the half, which is called the half material, the half spiritual level, known as the high council. The average time for human spiritual evolution in the material planes before reaching the high council, the half, the half physical, half spiritual, is about 40 to 60 million years, just for your information. And uh, interesting side note, according to the planet and the people and the evolution of individual peoples, there lie very many possibilities to change this duration, and indeed it can be longer. And thus, given that there were people who were living for about 400 million years before Nakadamian, a lot of them had already gone out of their physical lives and were either in the half material and moved on into the pure spirit flame, flames, planes. Um, so, the High Council, one of the High Councils in any way that we know of, that the Pleiaran consult with, is in, actually located in the Andromeda Galaxy. 
and Nokadamian spirit form spent 56 million years in the High Council and then had moved on actually into the lowest of the pure spirit planes and that is those planes are called the Arahat Athersata which has many levels to it where he spent 8.7 million years or his spirit form did. After Nokadamian spirit form had been in the Arahat Athersata for the 8.7 million years the AA turned to the Patali level for help. The Patali is the highest of the pure spiritual levels. After an unknown amount of time, a determination was made with the involvement of the High Council to create a universal prophet and to entrust this mission to the spirit form of Nokadamian. Nokadamian's spirit form had the option to do this or to not do it, but he did feel a great responsibility for the calamitous course his people's ancestors had gone off on and wanted to do what he could in order to rectify things. The duration of the entire process took 1.2 billion years, this whole transitional decision-making process, before his spirit form was returned to the material universe via the High Council. So I guess he went back, spent time in High Council, and then transitioned back to the material planes to re-begin the reincarnation process of births and deaths. Here's an excerpt from Contact Report 238, May of 1991 which talks further about Nakadamian's sense of responsibility and why he felt he had to come back to the material planes. 681. Thus, Nakadamian was faced with the choice of leaving his peoples to degenerate into universal monsters or command a halt to their murderous and power-hungry deeds. Naturally, he decided to command a halt, and accordingly, he issued his decree. This was based on his sense of justice and his loyalty to creation. Accordingly, he sought a solution which was anchored in the powers of the creational laws and recommendations. But in the meantime, back on uh, throughout the universe, chaos was erupting. Many of the direct physical descendants of Nakadamian's ancestors who did not choose to continue in the spreading of the mission's teaching led lives of Ausartungen, which is a German word for great degeneration. Let's just say it getting very badly out of the good human nature is a longer way of saying it. Over millions of years, countless generations and through countless alterations, changes and projections by unevolved personalities, um, devolved and the spiritual teaching was irretrievably altered in order to abuse power and falsely lead people to enslavement and depravity. Over millions of years his ancestors developed technologies and traveled out through the universe looking for new planets and galaxies to settle whilst continuing their murderous and treacherous course and with the turn to evil and degenerated behaviors they compromised not only the livelihood of those in their galaxy but with their excesses, with their technological advancements, they also delayed their own growth and, uh, and the lives and endangered the lives of others in other galaxies. And uh, they, so they delayed their growth throughout wide expanses of the universe. And this led to an actual freezing of the creational teaching and where it lay fallow for about 7 million years. So, anyway, now we're back to, he's back. It's now about 8.4 billion years ago before Emmanuel and Nakadamian spirit form returns to the material universe and embarks on the longest journey in order to start this rectification. In the ensuing approximately 7 billion years, this history includes wars, subjugation, annihilations of peoples, destroyed planets, technological advancements, intergalactic pursuits and relocations, etc. Uh, so this presentation attempts to glean out some excerpts from uh, some contact reports that deal with his activities amongst these histories. There's huge histories, contact reports that go into great detail of the comings and goings, and oh, it just goes on and on. Um, in many of the contact reports, the exact times aren't clear, and due to Billy's sometime incorrect downloading of the symbols for billion versus millions, there are some uh, inconsistencies. So... That's all stuff that needs to be corrected and will be corrected over time. Contact report 238 again. Ta spoke of, build, of the measures that Nogadamian took when he came back. First, in the course of only a few decades, he established gigantic armies which are of an exclusively android nature. Then he armed them with all conceivable weapons and robots whereby hard-heading armies arose, sworn singly and alone to Nogadamian's high command. 
The single leaders of the individual armies and troops finally were taken over and managed by the leaders and more experienced of the different planets, whose governments united and were able to defend themselves against the criminal and unhesitatingly murdering conquerors. With these war experienced ones and leaders stemming from many different planets and together with the robots and weapons built with the help of governments and with the androids, Nakadamian constructed a multinational peacekeeping troop. So veterans instantly appeared everywhere and fought the criminal conquerors or imprisoned them when these led to their conquering campaigns. Where these led to their conquering campaigns. With Within fewer than eight years, all the criminal peoples were in the custody of multinational peacekeeping troops and deported to a distant planet that was hermetically barricaded and guarded so that nobody could escape, even if anyone possessed, possessed flying machines capable of space travel. In conformity with the law of logical force, Nakodamian issued the decree, decree that both sexes of the people were ordained to sterility in a lawful and humane way. And thus the order and decree was passed through the engagement of the Arahat after Satileva and those who passed away in the course of time to a natural death should not be ordained a reincarnation. Rather, that their spirit forms had to stay as long in the realm of the other side until they, one day, through a new decree of Nokodamian, could again find an existence in human bodies. However, this had to continue for a very long time, in addition led thereto that almost all knowledge had to escape out of the storage banks of these personalities and new personalities were created through the collective consciousness block. Thus, this process of exhausting the greatest part of the knowledge stored in the storage banks continued for almost four billion years, before Nokodamian, with the help of the Arahat Athersata level, again called these, these aforementioned spirit forms, and newly generated, uh, new, and newly ordered them into the human bodies. And I'll just take a short break here. and called the aforementioned spirit forms and newly ordered them into human bodies, indeed in his newly endangered and created, engendered and created peoples who found their origins eight billion years ago on Lassan, which is located in the proximity of Nisan, on the other side of the central sun of our Milky Way galaxy, yet in the Arcan dimension. Approximately 8 billion years ago, his spirit form was no longer known as Nokodamian, but rather was, was the first time he was reborn into a human being named Henok. Thereby, Henok, on a far distant planet in a distant galaxy, founded the so-called Henok line, and he also created new peoples and thus founded his mission and tasks under that name. During these times, a group of 144,228 helpers free willingly dedicated themselves to helping him move the mission forward. It is believed that these, there were numerous times, at least eight, where this number of 144228 uh, numbers of people dedicated and came in and out of the Nokodamian uh, lineage, the Nokodamian Henoch lineage, and dedicated their tasks. I don't know why that number exists, but that's what it was. In Bernadette's book, she stated uh, a number of times about that his spirit form uh, goes back to the High Council and back to the Arahat uh, on numerous times. So this had to be clarified because as far as we know, this event happens only once. So what we found out from uh, Christian's booklet, which is this, um, is that this return... Uh, was out of the pure spiritual level. The further communing, this is what they would call a communing with a high council in the Arahat, took place in the form of a spiritual energy impulse wandering, quote unquote, is how it was termed, that's what Billy called it, which can be understood as a process in which a communicative impulsive spiritual energy connection took place between Nokodamian and the high council level and the Arahat at their Sata levels. This can be likened to a form of telepathy. At times, his spirit form stayed on the other side for great, great periods of time. So there were sort of big chunks of time where he was doing the mission and big times where he just didn't reincarnate. So maybe that allots for these sort of special chunks of time. And now we're getting a bit closer. Now we're coming into 1.3 billion years ago. The latest time of the Henoch return, so this was one of these times, from a long period spent on the other side, 
was another start of a significant period of incarnations. And once again, he gathered his peoples around him. Out of the Nakodamian Hanok teaching, two main groups resulted. Those acting in a good manner according to struggles for peace that resulted into freed peoples and planets and living a great life. And they initially made their way to the Lyran star system, which is in the Arcan space-time continuum and not to be confused with the early Lyran uh, galaxy where Nakodamian originated. And settled there on this Lyran uh, star system. However, first, they'd settled in various other worlds and systems of foreign galaxies for more than a million years. And there, further war actions had arisen, many space-wide migrations of peoples, and they all finally ended up in, another, in this space-time continuum, including that of the Playaran and some of the people who eventually came to Earth. The second li line of people who split off from this original Ur group 1.2 billion years ago, they went in a different direction. They also emigrated, emigrated to other galaxies, but lost their knowledge of where they had come from. They lost that uh, for 70 million years, and they fabricated a whole new history. And that had nothing to do with the truth, or only a very small part. As well, many races belonged to these, as with the Lyran, that uh, they also had arrived to a peaceful state, but such a peaceful state that they became quite defenseless against aggressors, much sooner than the old Lyran had they settled in the Sirius galaxy, also in Arcan, and developed to a high level whereby they were able to create new life themselves. They did gene manipulations in new races in order to defend themselves. So that's what they did. They sort of did these gene manipulations, created these people, gave them shorter lives, made them very aggressive, and they were their armies. But then these people started to rise up and wanted to attack their creators and take over because they were aggressive, and their creators weren't. So... Anyway, long history, the, uh, the creators wanted to start to eliminate these aggressors who were turning on them, and when the, uh, the ones that were created realized this, they took off. And so another whole long history of people going fly, fleeing out throughout the universes happens. Now we're going to jump up to a mere 12 million years ago. At that time, it was decided by Arahat Athersada that one of these 144228 groups of people uh, who, according to creational laws, would have been moving on into higher levels of the high council and would have moved on into the, um, uh, the spiritual planes, would be held back in their uh, evolution and they would not go on and that they would stay in order to help out with the, um, the mission in the millions of years to come. So, and I guess they had willingly volunteered to do this too, so all was good. And uh, so uh, an, a type of evolutionary stepping back was affected upon these people. So they stayed on the other side for four million years. And the storage of their qualities and the values of their personalities and their consciousness block and everything that they had learned remained in the overall consciousness block, which is a form of a storage system. And four million years, thus eight million years ago, they came back to help with the mission. 389,000 years is when the mission-related space travelers arrived on Earth, coming from Malona, which is our present-day asteroid belt, and that's another long story, and Mars. They came from Malona and Mars. Samyaza was the leader of this group, and he was a reincarnation of the Henoch Nakodamian spirit form. He came with this large group, including the group of the 144228, and they were the ones loyal to the mission, to settle here. They intermixed with human beings that were living on the earth already and found new joiners who also made commitments to the ongoing support of through future incarnations as well. And the rest of the history now is based on earth. So, 15,200 years ago. A part of the original 144228, however, did not uphold their commitments to the mission, which led to great misery for the Earth's inhabitants. And about a thousand of the culpable ones were deported to other planets and taught anew over many incarnations. All this history from the beginning of Nakodamian billions of years ago to the space travelers coming to Earth is part of this four, four, billion, uh, four, four time periods referred to earlier. And so just to give you an overview, Patrick McKnight from a Figu-based group 
out of the US called the Creational Truth, compiled this line drawing uh, lineage chart that follows Nokodanian spirit form through the ages. It's broken down into the four different representative ages through which Nokodamian spirit form, form uh, incarnated. I made a copy of it myself and blew it up and put it onto a poster, so you need a magnifying glass because it's just like, I don't know what the font is, negative two or something to actually go through all this stuff. It's amazing. So you guys can look at this later if you like. Um, yeah, so this first section of this chart, which is... Here, uh, though it's the smallest of size on the overall chart, it actually represents the greatest amount of the time span of Nakadanian spirit form's journey. He was out in space, as, and it includes his transition between Arahat Ather Sada and his return. And so I, I'm guessing about 99.9% .9 of his entire time was in this first little section. <laughs> 13,500 years ago, before Emmanuel, this is when they start of the uh, next time period called the uh, Middle Later Time. And this is when the first of three Henoch spirit forms bearing prophetic personalities, with all with the name Henoch, also known as Enoch, E-N-O-C-H, in our, our history, our earthbound history, appears. And like Henoch, this name also means the wise man of time, or the initiate. This marks the beginning of the second time period, as I said, this later middle time, middle later time. And though this prophet Henoch in, is not part of the sevenfold spirit lineage, he served as a teacher only for the far away traveled peoples, people coming from outer space who were still coming and going at that point. And uh, yeah, so, this was also the case with, as was the case with the old Hanok and the old Nakodamian. Also at that same time, the previously deported former loyal ones from out of the 144228, who had been sent off to other planets to try to get their act together, they returned from uh, basically a 1,700 year banishment to Mars or wherever they went who in the meantime had free willingly committed themselves to make right the previously uh, evoked wrongs their former personalities had wrought upon the earth humans. However, yet again, they fell into their old ways, and again, further injustices followed. And at this time, an actual codex was created. It was an agreement. It was formed by these fallible ones in order to hamper further miscarriages of justice by those bad seeds of the 144228, which was to last another approximately 13,500 years. So this codex came to an end in our lifetime. Here we are. This is the first prophet of the sevenfold prophet lineage. About 4,000 years after the Henoch Enoch, the second Henoch Enoch of our earth based history appears, who is the first, uh, this one appears, who is the first in the lineage. He served to bridge the transition from Henoch spacefaring mission uh, bringers to the actual start of the terrestrial based mission. And he was designated purely for the earthly mission. He was the only prophet in the lineage who appeared in this middle later time. Hanok was the son of a man named Cretan, who was a Playaran. The Hanok prophecies were recounted by Quetzal in Contact Report 215, February 87. The English version can be found in the back of Guido Moosbrucker's book. This book, there's a whole thing in here, the Hanok prophecies at the back. It's quite amazing. Um, and so what is it going to say here? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I just lost my place. Which slide are we on? Yep. And so they fly, the name of the book. And after, after Hanok Enoch, the, set, the third, after this guy, the third Hanok Enoch appeared. And that happened about 4,000, 5,000 years after the second one, who was the first. It's all a bit confusing. He was a carrier of the same spirit form. He was also a prophet, the third one. And... But he didn't, uh, he wasn't exactly uh, belonging to the sevenfold lineage, but he did carry forward the teaching. We don't have any pictures of him. So, here's just an overview of the middle later period, which you can see the one, the yellow box is Henoch II. 
Here we are with the second prophet of the lineage, Elijah, or Eliah. He was the first prophet out of five who were deemed bound to be living in this, um, this period of what they now call the other time. He was the son of Josias and was born in Gilead, Tisbishia, which is situated in Jordan. He didn't have any family, as reported, Billy, as reported uh, when Billy noted it in a conversation with Samyasi in Contact 23 of June 1975. In a later contact with Ta, uh, was written, Elijah brought the true teaching of the creation and its laws and recommendations, which was thoroughly misunderstood, there, however, by all the Jewish peoples as this also happened with all the other prophets and their teachings, and indeed up to the prophet Emmanuel. And interestingly, um, it's noted that Elijah had the, uh, the joy to go in a beam ship. He was flown up to Srinagar in, Ka in Kashmir at one point, uh, on April 7, 842 BC. After his death, his spirit form stayed on the other side for only eight years, and came back as Isaiah. Who was, who lived for 770, uh, how many years did he live? 82 years. He was the son of a man named Amos and was born in Sidon, which was an ancient Phoenician port city, also known as Sidonia, and is located south of present day Beirut in Lebanon. Then, after, uh, there's not a whole lot of information about Isaiah um, that I could really find in the contact notes, but I didn't want to go into great detail anyway, this is too long. Uh, after his Life, his spirit form, spent only 28 years on the other side before coming back as Jeremiah. There's a lot more stuff on Jeremiah. And uh, contact 229 with a play iron man named Quetzal, June 31st, 89. It was written that Jeremiah, oh, and I just, just a little bit more information before I go along. Jeremiah was the son of the high priest Hilkis, or Hil Hilkius, born in a place called Anathoth. Anathoth. I'm not lisping, uh, which is outside of Jerusalem. And here's a small excerpt from that uh, contact uh, where Quetzal is quoting Jeremiah. When the prophet of the New Times spreads his teaching, which is going to be is Billy, um, the time of the great transformation has begun. Very many human beings will be suffering from hunger and thirst, while some human beings lose their lives due to extremely high temperatures. Many others will turn blue due to extreme cold and will be plagued by great waters. In general, the human being deteriorates into being afraid of events occurring in nature, and many would like to see another world. And many lapse into fear because the world's powerful rulers degenerate in a worst form of inhumanity, wage wars in a vicious manner in order to seize countries and mineral resources. Ring a bell? They will be the hypocrites who are audacious enough to claim that they act in the name and command of a god in order to consolidate their greed for power. That's, that's just a small little thing. Jeremiah's uh, were actually were predictions. They weren't prophecies. Billy says, actually says these actually aren't prophecies but rather predictions which will therefore definitely fulfill themselves under all circumstances. We're seeing it now. Before the Nocodamian... Hanok's spirit form returned as the next prophet, uh, 580 years elapsed. However, within that time, before the next prophet lineage came on, and that prophet number three was to come along, uh, two notable Greek uh, teachers um, came along who were, had the spirit form of Nocodamian. We had Socrates. Which, so he came along at 89 years after the death of Jeremiah. Uh, he was considered one of the founders of Western philosophy. Most of his work is better known by the written uh, dialogues he had with his famous pupil Plato. Plato then passed on Socrates' teachings to his own famous pupil, Aristotle, who was also Nocodamian spirit form bearing. So that's pretty interesting. Um, he was born a scant 15 years after the death of Socrates. So in the meantime, Plato in the meantime was sort of bridging the gap and taught him and on they went. Anyway, 322 years after Aristotle, we have number five in the lineage, Emmanuel, a.k.a. Jesus Christ. Um, and he was actually born two years before the reported birth due to erroneous calendar keeping that we've happened after this. There was some changes, which we won't go into either. 
Um, his father was Gabriel, who was an E.T. of Playaran origin. Mother was Mary of terrestrial origin, betrothed to Joseph, who agreed to raise Emmanuel as his own. And um, Emmanuel lived a long life, which we all know about, and he died in Srinagar, India. The name J.C. was ascribed to Emmanuel that hundreds of years later by the Greeks, referring to Jesus Christos, Jesus being adopted from the Latin version of Jesus, Joshua, and Christos was the name Greeks gave to all the gods, has also been said that Christos had to do with the cross, and so could also have been Joshua of the cross. There's many various versions floating around there for why um, his name became Jesus Christ. Um, then, that was, we're going on now to the next, uh, the prophet of the lineage, number six. Oh, and by the way, that, sorry, that last, just go back here for a second. That line drawing was done the play, by the play Aaron, and it's actually a pretty good representation, apparently, of what um, Emmanuel looked like. Muhammad was a six in the prophet lineage, and he was the last prophet of the, what they call the other time. Muhammad's teachings was mostly by word of mouth, and not a lot was written down, unfortunately. Um, and so thus a lot was turned into erroneous scripts uh, via false understandings and or malicious changes that were made, and eventually they all subverted the truth. And between Muhammad and the last prophet uh, were some actual, the last prophet being Billy now, uh, there were some, a lot of, more notable personages from our history who were also enlivened by Nocodamian. So we'll just go briefly through who some of these people were. Uh, just before we do that, though, we're just going into the other time. So this is just a synopsis of the, the five prophets there, which is a little bit hard to see right now, but you can look at that on the chart. So here are some of the other personalities. Faust, 848 years mm -hmm. after Muhammad. He was a German alchemist, astrologer, magician of the German Renaissance. Next was Galileo, which was only after, uh, on the other side, 23 years after Faust's death. Galileo he was Italian, astronomer, physicist, engineer, philosopher, and he was a father, known as the father of science and the scientific method. 114 years after the death of Galileo was Mozart. And uh, I think we all know who Mozart was. He was a famous composer, musician, born, came from Austria. And then only 18 years after the death of, death of Mozart, Mendelssohn uh, came. He was out of Germany. He was also a famous uh, composer, pianist, organist, and conductor. So 18 years after the death of Mozart, he was born. His lifespan just reached across into the beginning of the transition period from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, which occurred in 1844. Um, from Christian Frainer's book, he talks about, with regard to the, um, just going back to the, to the Mozart and the Mendelssohn's lives, their entire, entire evolutionary and progressive work refers to the general and very important influences of music on the human being, whereby the musical stimulation effect and scope of, of power of the effectiveness of the musical influences on the human being with regard to his, her forms of morality, eth ethos, ethics and customs, and thus, of course, with regard to their pattern of behavior, their life, how they shape their life and their lifestyle are of immense importance. And Billy has written a lot about the importance of music and its effects on us. So it's interesting. Then 28 years after Mendelssohn, there's still yet another person um, widely known, and that's Rasputin, uh, born in the Siberian region of Russia. He was a mystic and a self-proclaimed holy man and healer. He was close to the family of the Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, and he healed from a distance the Tsar's only son who suffered from hemophilia. So he had advanced consciousness abilities as well. Very interesting. I've read some books about Rasputin. Interesting. And then... Just as a sum up here, all these men, there's a, maybe another person, because people have alluded that there's possibly another person that lived in that time period. I'm not sure who. And Christian Craner said, yes, possibly. So you'd have to 
sort of go back into your history to figure out who this person could have been that they're not uh, saying yes or yay or nay to. All these men had special tasks and capabilities which brought progressive values for the next centuries in many ways, which as such were not to be recognized right then. However, they were significant, and with the respective sciences being more rational, more comprehensively researched, and newly valuable, as well as progressive future teaching realizations were gained from them. So, in sort of retrospect, these valuations were realized, and the rapid development into the modern times could find its purposeful progress through these people. Anyway, only 21 years after the death of Rasputin, Billy Myers born. Uh, and he is the seventh and the last prophet in this lineage. His birth date coincides with the beginning of the second half of the transition period from age of, into the age of Aquarius out of Pisces. He's the last and he is known, he's the one and only prophet of this new age, new time, Aquarian age. Because of the great value of the spirit form of Nocodamian, the spirit potential potency has a very great value, but in order to live amongst the people uh, now uh, at, the, at our state of evolution, his spirit potential had to be what they called throttled back and adjusted down to the general level of the spiritual evolution of those on earth. The spirit potential today of Billy's spirit form capabilities is now held at 27.2% of where what he's actually would have been capable of if he weren't stuck amongst us. He's been having ongoing contacts, as we all know, since he was five years old with other Ur descendants, uh, since he was five years old with other Ur descendants of his previous space-faring peoples, these are the Playaran, and with other ETs who belong to their federation. So this is just the sum up of the last section, which is the densest of all of them. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. And then... And just as in the past lives, Nocodamian spirit form, when incarnated as a truth bringer, people gathered around. And they gathered around Billy, free willingly, in order to help him with his mission. This is an old picture of the group of members that were around him back in Switzerland, I think back in the 70s. This is pictures from many have uh, died or left or transitioned to various things, and more people have come in since this one. Christian Frainer is there, who's going to come here and uh, be with us next month he is the one up in the very back row like third from the left standing like this that's Christian so that's that's him with hair sorry Christian the white shirt yeah he's besides Hans Losendorfer on the who's on his right anyway so um, so they all there were people that lived close to Billy's home uh, in Hinterschmidrudy at the time it's about 24 years ago they are called the core group of 49. Most likely, they are part of the lineage of the uh, relatively recent 144228 people, uh, the helpers of the day of old. Since then, some have died, some have left. Throughout the world, there are many others who are also probably part of that previous group or of those who joined later, including a handful of small nation groups, uh, including the peoples of the Landis groups and um, interesting groups that have formed uh, to help with this information. And uh, we have become daughter groups to the Swiss Mother Center and are able to do this out of our uh, volunteering and willingly wanting to take on the responsibility. And there will always be new people coming through uh, because they recognize the truth. And Nocodamian's history is known throughout the universe. And because of this, Billy, Billy has visitors coming from the far reaches of space to meet him to this day. His books and teaching are studied by a tiny percentage of those incarnated on the planet Earth now, only a tiny, but studied by many more throughout the universe, primarily within the federation to which the Playaran belong. The present-day federation of the Playaran, whose peoples are part of the direct descendants belonging to the old Nocodamian Ur peoples, is made up of around 154 various nations out of various galaxies who extend across these two time-space dimensions that we know of. Manara from Contact 393 2005 wrote, and there are many other nations who are not descendants of the Nocodamian line who also teach, read, and study your books. Talking to Billy. 1995 is when the bases, the player on bases, actually packed it up and left 
However, since then we have found out from Christian that they have recently come back because of the tenuous times we live in. I don't, they won't be able to actually do anything, but they're here just to, just to watch over, I suppose, in case, you know, we blow up something. If we, we're about to the point where we're going to blow up and affect the solar system, which will affect the galaxy, they may intervene. So, From the Q&A booklet compiled by Christian, this little one here, um, he writes, the further new following personalities, because this is some of the questions that came up um, from the latest lineage, last lineage of Nocodamian, will remain conscious of their entire missionary knowledge in their future lives, and indeed until the time of finding their way back to the Arahat Athasada level in the year 3999. It was determined that the following personalities who would continue to keep all their missionary knowledge in regard to the teaching of the truth, life, and spirit, however, no longer in a prophet-proclaimer uh, manner, but only to be active in other forms, unrecognized, and in the background as personalities originating from Nocodamian lineage. They will not proclaim themselves, and therefore it's a form of fail-safe so that people who do come along in the future and say, I am the reincarnation of Nocodamian, Henoch, etc., will, uh, will, it'll be known that they are false, false claimers. Billy's spirit form will remain on the earth. The new personalities will uh, remain on the earth of the sevenfold uh, will remain on the earth, but these will leave it temporarily because these personalities will continue to be have a connection with the play Aaron. 2029 is when the play Aaron return to their space-time dimension and will no longer work on the earth in any form. In the year 3999. Near 399, this is from um, Christian's booklet, all spirit forms of all the members or those loyal to the mission who contributed to and have worked their way up in the evolutionary stages stipulated by Arahat at the sad level will leave the earth and will reincarnate into another world in new personalities into a humanity in that other world that is of a higher evolution of this planet. And subsequently these new personalities will resume their evolutionary path as wise human beings um, according to the creational law of evolution. And they will eventually enter into the High Council and in the Arahat Athasata level. According to the Arahat Athasata level, also the Nakodamian spirit form is predestined or arranged for in the time of the year 3999, but not in the manner as the members of the mission whose spirit forms will leave the earth. But he will go directly at that time from a physical incarnation to Arahat Athersata. He will not go back through the High Council. So that's what happened to 399 with his spirit form. And um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. So these are just a few interesting questions. There are quite a few questions in this booklet, but there's some ones I thought that were interesting. Um, this one, of course, what happens to uh, our twin creation? Does it, did it have a prophet? Or is Billy their prophet? So it talks about our uh, twin creation has a universe, one of its seven material belts. It's called the Tao and that we know of, and it belongs to our twin. It's the highest, the highest developed peoples in the Tao are a race known as the Sonair. They've been living in peace since time immemorial. From Christian Frainer's booklet, quote, also with them a prophethood and a proclamation Proclaimerhood arose at very early times, however, in a different way than in the Dern universe, because with the Sonair peoples, two manner of prophethood emerged at very early times, namely a prophetess and a prophet. One, the, prop, the female proclaimer was called Nis, N-E-S-E, while the, the male prophet was called Arkan, uh, had the name Alcan. From the Sonayara peoples, a group called the Timars split off and formed their own people's lineage, whereby they continued the teachings of the old wives, ones, Nis, and Alcan. In later times, they mingled with distant ancestors from ancient Playaran races who had entered into the Dal universe. They found a way to get through. They had a port, opened up a portal into our twin uh, creation. And these ancient people teamed up with the Timars. 
This had the result that the teaching of Nocodamian brought by the play iron into that universe also reached Demars and the Sonair. And because this doctrine harmonized with that of Nisa and Alcan, both largely identical doc doctrines were combined and henceforth taught among the people of the Timar and Sonair and was abided by to the present time and will undoubtedly also be observed into the, into the future for all time. Basically, it can thus be said that the prophetic, heraldic teaching of the Sonair and Timars is identical with the teaching of Nocodemians. Another question. Why are all the prophets of the Nocodemian lineage male? The fact that the Nocodemian prophet proclaimer lineage was and is quite male finds its reason in the fact since all, all beginnings and at the time of Nocodemian that the degeneration of the male sex had become so depraved that no possibility existed that a prophetic work could have been realized through a female personality. A female, quote-unquote, would have had absolutely no chance throughout all times and would, to put it mildly, have been disgraced, defiled, humiliated, soiled, and desecrated by the male world. Foreseeing this, the Arahat Athersata level took this fact into account and everything from thus from was thus directed that concerning the prophetic proclaimer la lineage of Nocodamian, this could only be of a male gender throughout throughout. This was due since time immemorial to the extremely severe and viciously negative degeneration of the men, for whom women were nothing more than oppressed slaves and objects of use, which will be sustained long into the future in this wise. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know? Um, what about uh, these 144228? So, what about the extension of the mission times? This was partially answered in that other one. Um, it's saying the extension of the mission time of those loyal ones who further evolved into the half-spirit level high council was slowed down or influenced by the, the uh, Arahat Athersata in order they can meanwhile support the mission, herald far longer in the mission than the standard duration of 46 million years in the material world. So regarding them, is their future duration of activity synchronized with that of the universal proclaimer herald? Or does it end earlier, does it end earlier whereupon new loyal ones are then found and become committed so what happened, the answer was to that was that from the year 399, uh, those loyal ones, they go on to this other planet and they will continue with the duration, within the duration of the 40 to 60 million years of the, uh, what has to be the uh, evolution period, but it probably will go faster for them because they will be further along in their evolution uh, before they go on into the Arahat and Athersata, but that will continue when they're in the new world after 3999. And it's also said, the new members or the loyal ones in relation to continuation of the mission will no longer appear because from the year 399, as is determined by the level Arahat Athersata, the humanity of the earth must autonomously develop itself in every respect according to the teaching of the truth, teaching of the spirit, teaching of the life, or perish. So once they're gone, this planet will be on its own and it's up to us, the people remaining here, to carry on that teaching. So hopefully by then, we'll have learned some stuff. Were the higher spiritual levels already populated during the first 46 trillion years? So that was a question. The question was, I seem to remember that you once said that the levels High Council, Arahat, Athersata, etc. already existed before the first entry of the first human spirit form because the structural construction of the universe by the creation of universal consciousness took place at the very beginning. Does this mean that the levels High Council to Patali already existed during the first 46 trillion years? And the answer was that all levels from Arahat Athersata to Patali in creational universe consciousness are fundamentally in existence and contain the necessary basic energetic of evolutive impulses which, however, lie fallow until they become activated through new spiritual energetic impulses flowing into them from the outside as this occurs with any creational universal consciousness which emerges as the lowest form of creation from the absolute absolutum or can also come from an ur creation and is the only form of creation that has the material belt. And as I said before, we happen to be from the absolute absolutum. Um, was this series of the seven prophets a uh, predetermined thing and does it happen often? The series of seven prophets is not creationally and lawfully predetermined. 
for what has arisen in this regard with the Nalcadamian lineage was of necessity due to the badly gotten out of control behavior of the human beings who went on out into the earth after that. So that's basically, this was a once a unique thing that happened, this lineage. These are uh, two of the books where the teaching of the prophets are widely known to be in. The Basically the six prophets, six of them not Emmanuel, are in the Goblet of the Truth, and the Talmud Emmanuel carries forth the um, specific teachings of Emmanuel, and uh, of course the teaching is throughout all the books and throughout all the contexts as well. It's, it's interwoven into everything that Billy writes. And, of course, you guys probably know about this. This is an interesting book, uh, Spiritual Teaching Symbols. These are some of the about 600 and odd numbers of teaching symbols um, that were downloaded by Billy out of 52 million. 52 million would be a pretty big book. Um, so, just wrapping up here, the cedar tree. This is the symbol, the picture that Billy chose for the cover of his book. Translation of this uh, saying here is the cedar symbolizes durability, sta stability, longevity, strength, and undyingness. The consciousness preserved before the decay. And it's a good, a good representation of the indestructiveness of the spirit form and the steadfastness of Nakodamian's dedication to helping human beings move forward in their evolution. Through Billy's abilities to access his spirit form storage banks, so much knowledge has been brought to the fore that we have never known before in the history of this planet. Through the documentation of his over 700 contact reports with his loyal friends from the Playaras, Playaras the Dal universe, and from throughout various dimensions, plus over 60 books, in addition to the spiritual teaching course, infinite knowledge and wisdom has been forever stored in written form to inform and free humanity in the millennia to come. For that, we are all exter externally, extremely uh, grateful for this extraordinary being who walks the earth at the same time as ourselves. This person who has worked ceaselessly and entirely to bring us the teaching of the truth, the teaching of the spirit, and the teaching of the life. When he departs this life, his words will live on, and it will be up to each of us to take up the torch and keep the flame of knowledge burning in order to cast light into delusion and untruth. And I thank you very much. That's it. Uh, any questions? <laughs> uh, probably about two. His question was, what time did I start speaking? for the tape. <laughs> so, yes, David. Um, at the beginning of the uh, discussion, you showed us or talked about how the moon came into our solar system oh, yeah. from the Ankar. Mm -hmm. um, I've read a lot about that too, but I guess the question is, if there's a dimensional gate between the two, mm -hmm. how did the destroyer broken bits of one planet that came over our moon was one of those bits mm -hmm. how did it come through the gate I guess is my question I did read how this, there was one of, one of their suns imploded or exploded yep. and that tore um, a hole in time and I'm thinking mm -hmm. to myself maybe that's how it crossed, crossed the dimension that I cannot answer. I have no idea. Um, you know, I think this is this gate must be just some existing physical thing out there that you don't need to have technology to go through. It just flukily went into it. But, but naturally, it happened instead of man-wise somehow. Possibly. I know that there was this explosion of a great sun, and that tore a, a big hole in the fabric of space-time somehow. I don't know if that was the actual... Uh, dimensional portal that arose from that? Yeah. In my business of information technology, some questions always lead to more questions. Yes, they do. There's many so, unanswerable questions. So, in this. Yeah. Ask, yeah. So that's... Uh, yeah, Robert? I was thinking, uh, like, well, 
people in the firm spending money, they really start getting very tuned in and getting a little more information than they generally carry. Um, then we pass on, then we reincarnate, coming back in with this extra information. So there would be on the planet several sub spiritual forms acting out a very proper existence. Yeah, I worded that correctly, but <laughs> we went over your I'm not sure what the question actually is, so. Well, it's just like, well, uh, Hypothesizing? People that study spiritual traditions really well. Yes. Then when they die and come back, they're already ahead of the game and they tend to add to what they spiritually learned in the last. Yeah, I guess every life you're going to gain knowledge and uh, wisdom. Some of it might be factual, some of it might be human created knowledge that um, could be true or not true. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of uh, traditions of spirituality that have maybe come out of original uh, traditions that came from Nocodamian or from other planets or that have arose and have migrated and transmuted and they still have an essence of truth in them, but there's also a whole lot of other stuff and uh, what, do you, what do you call them? Uh, beliefs. Beliefs that may or may not quite be on the right track, but, you know, everyone grows from every life, whether that's a spiritual life or, or not. That was way better worded than you realized. That oh, well, that's good. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry we didn't have your actual question on tape, but I guess, um, anyway, so... <laughs> that was the best we could answer that question. I don't think there's a mic that we have for that. Yes, Carol. Now? Now, yeah. Because the, um, the races, those aggressive races, have gone out and propagated and mixed with races and the spirit forms, of the, especially earthbound, all the humans have been created, have been affected by this life shortening gene. And that's why now the times are shorter. Maybe some of the earlier uh, Henochs and stuff were still living to the 1,000 and beyond years that we're supposed to be. And eventually it will be corrected by our scientists. We will start to live longer lives again. Which is maybe not a good thing in this overpopulated world. <laughs> yeah. A lot of 1,200-year-old geriatrics. Yeah. Any idea what the genetic manipulation is? Uh, no, it's something to do with that. Yeah, there's some... No, I'm not a genetic scientist, so I can't tell you what that is, but it's, uh, we're getting close to finding, finding it out. It's something new. I, we were missing uh, one chromosome, like we only have 23, whereas we're supposed to have 24. Has anybody heard that? I, I can't comment on our, any uh, missing chromosomes or not. Last question for me. Uh, Aside from the seven prophets that Nobodinian reincarnates through uh, or has, with the others like Faust and Mozart, did they did they have any communication or was it told or mentioned? Did they know that they were the Nobodinian reincarnated spirit form, whereas Billy had contact and did they consciously know? Did the lesser reincarnates, mm -hmm. did they know that they were reincarnates of the Nobodinian? So yeah, the question, did the other notable personages that were not prophets have knowledge of their prophetic uh, lineage or their, yeah. their mission-based? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I would say maybe subconsciously yeah. they would. It hasn't said in, um, in these books that they knew about it. Uh, you know, you'd think that Rasputin would have some idea because he was, but no, as far as we know, not. Maybe on a subconscious level, but again, that's only something Billy would be able to answer. Because as I understand it, my spirit form, if you call it a gut feeling or whatever you want to call it, it's helping me along. You know, I'm not regressing, hopefully. I'm 
here and moving forward. Yeah. So I would assume that it's the same thing. Yeah. Robert? Um, to answer his question, that they were still here up until 1995, as each of these people uh, came to be boss, Mendelssohn. A contingent from the base would probably work and in the base with them and help them get good grounding in their work? Um. Perhaps. I mean, the player had been here for a long time, and they would have been aware at all times where the spirit form of Nakadamian was. But whether they were going to them in the beam ships and saying, hey, hi, uh, remember you were Nakadamian and you were Hanok and all that stuff? I don't know. But they had, they still yet had their own uh, influences and also the you know, great works that all these, per these personages did uh, helped humanity to move ahead. So maybe they were impulsed or they had their own impulses, obviously coming from from their own storage banks being the oldest spirit form in this this universe. They're much older than the Playaran, and indeed they're actually, you know, Academian and Billy has teaches them. They have their own, he has their own course for them. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing. So, yes, Chris? In the, uh, in, in, in the contact, uh, uh, Reports between Billy and uh, Ta. Uh, Ta explains something. I mean, looking at our immediate future, Billy is is really putting the whole humanity down, and he's saying, "Well, we there's really nothing nothing beneficial in, in the human race." Uh, and then Ta is talking about, and that is uh, not that long ago, when they, in their world, had uh, a similar situation, and there was a sphere that appeared, which infused thoughts into the people that brought them up to a higher level. Did you ever hear about that? A fear that brought... A sphere. Oh, a sphere. Yeah. Mm. Appeared in the sky hmm. and it, it uh, infused the, the people with the uh, uh, higher spirit. Hmm. I've heard of that. That's That would be a great thing. Imagine if a sphere appeared on the earth and all the... That, that would be a simple solution it would be. for us, right? It, yeah, perhaps. I, I, I was or would it get all the militaries together to, uh, you know, go out there and start nuking it? You know, it's the other thing. Where it's, it's, it's depending on our... Which where, would yeah, which would you have? This or this? I mean, our consciousness is at such a, on a global scale, is so fear-oriented and so aggressive. And uh, yeah. but, but maybe something like that would turn everyone around. Yeah. yeah. Are, we, are, we, are we not supposed to... Developed to a higher level in that uh, in that uh, Aquarian age. Yes, we are supposed to, and it's just still just coming in now. It's still transitioning in until 2029, I believe, which is when it will be in the full force of the Aquarian age will be in effect. And of course, with this transition, it's known that it's really a tumultuous time, and a lot of religions are sprouting up and clamoring to, to hang on to the old ways and the wars and the aggression. That all just really comes to a fore and really starts to bubble and then it's going to start now the light's starting to come in this information is starting to get out you know people are becoming more aware of the climate and everything that we're doing uh, the internet and the technology is all helping to spread the information a lot more so you know those are our positives but at the same time we have the machinations of the US and the uh, and their allies and all that kind of thing going on and the propaganda and misinformation everywhere so it's a really a uh, yeah. It's still a crazy time, but... Before you know. that happens, it, it appears like all life on Earth has to be extinguished. Almost, or, you know, maybe just about all of it. Who knows? It seems like well, that's the course we're heading in right now, because nobody's really changing their behavior to a great extent. Are, the, the date issue out there, 2029, it's too coincidental with also with the populace, or suppose... Mm -hmm. You know, whether or not it really does hit Earth, if it does, it's mm -hmm. been spelled out how it will. Yeah. And I think that that, if it did happen, you know, 
takes away half of the Middle East, that will wake up people too at the same time. You know, you're going through such a cataclysmic time. Yeah, well, it's supposed to be landing between the Black Sea and the, uh, what other one? The Black and the, uh, North, the, the North Sea. So the that's North. more around Poland, uh, Europe. The, the whole um, western side of the continent of Asia is going to be supported. Oh. But that means that your whole area where the, the old world, you know, Assyria, Babylon, where all, that's the area. And it's supposed to just be gone. Wow. That's the impact of it. Then the UK and Spain will split up and become a new continent. If that really, really happens, yes, the world and humankind is going to get shaken up a lot. Yeah. Well, that's 2029, which it's it's well, said it's supposed to have its first pass, the first pass or, or the next pass. pass in 2036. Yeah. Correct. So. Coincidental in, those, in that time. Well, I know. Let's hope we all get to live to see that. We all are lucky enough. So I'm thinking that maybe this could be time for a little break and then we can reconvene and uh, maybe if people want to stay to do some reading of Goblet of the Truth, you're welcome. We just have about an hour left. So maybe come back in, what, about 10 minutes, if you like.